What's going on everyone? My name is Griffin and in today's video we are going to be focusing on preliminary drainage design. Now there's actually two phases of the stormwater management design. I would say one is more of the high level focus which is the stormwater management plan which is essentially delineating the basins around the entire site and understanding how your ponds are going to capture that water. But then you actually have all of these little local drainage systems as we call them. What I mean by local is we we know at the end of the day, this pond right here is going to capture a large basin area of water. But what about all of the little sub basins in between, all of the little inlets that we're going to be placing throughout this cul-de-sac? How are those going to operate? So our focus is going to be on the latter, the little local drainage inlets that go into the pond. So at the end of this video, you'll actually see how quickly you can size drainage pipes using just simple areas and these little nifty drainage tools that I have. And all those drainage tools can be found in the link in my description. But I'm gonna jump right into it, guys. All right, here we have a residential site with a cul-de-sac and a pond. All of this is the right-of-way and road, and here we have the residential lots. Now, this example already is showing the drainage easement placements, and what I mean by that is we're going to have drainage easements required here to actually penetrate the pipes between the lots and go into the pond. If you have no idea what a drainage easement is, go watch some of my other videos. I won't be diving into why we place drainage easements in this video, but feel free to check out that land development series. We've, we've dived into a lot of that type of stuff. Now, the first kind of place where I begin with doing some preliminary drainage is I just wanna make sure that we're spacing the high points and low points far enough. And we've actually, I've already done that in one of the older episodes and that's exactly why these drainage easements are here. But I just kinda of wanna show you how far these are spaced. So here, we're generally gonna have a high point right at intersections. And, th and that's very typical where then we can start dropping down in elevation and have a low point right here to pick up the water. So let's just double check you know how far this is okay so it's almost it's almost around 200 feet and and you know that's that's typical uh, a good rule of thumb is anywhere between like 200 to 300 feet is a sweet spot because if you actually do a back calculation of capacity with some of these standard residential inlets 300 feet is that sweet spot for that maximum drainage basin area but we're going to get to that here in a second so since i know i'm going to have another low point here because i have a drainage easement here i know that there has to be some sort of high point in between this low point and this low point because again what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get water to flow from the center line down to the curb and then flow all the way down to these inlets. And let me just go ahead and place some boxes. Most of y'all might be wondering like, you know, when do we actually do this? When when do we, you know, really size the pipe and, and finalize the design? Well, what I'm showing you is a step that we do in our due diligence effort. And typically when we're working with these home builders trying to understand at a high level, you know, how much is this construction going to cost? And we don't have, you know, months and months to try to determine this. You know, we're trying to get a ballpark estimate when we're doing these due diligence plans and land development costs. So a lot of times we have to do these exercises that I'm doing now to understand the potential drainage pipe sizing through here. But I'm rambling on enough, so let me start drawing in some inlets and just you know, a red line of where these pipes are gonna be. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to just start preliminary sizing this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy these guys. And again, this isn't the final design guys, but you know, we have to know what we're gonna build in the future. Obviously I don't love that it's around that curve there, but we can always adjust these high points and low points later. This is just a visual representation just so we can size some pipes. So let's see how far these inlets are spaced here because I need to set a high point in between these low points. So we're looking like 267, half of 267 is, let's call it like 130. So maybe that high point can be somewhere, let's just say right there. You know, it's approximate. We're going to have a high point somewhere around here. So again, this is the high point. So when water hits, water is going to go that way, and then water is going to go that way. So we're setting that PGL at a higher 
point. In my other video, we walked through the grading of all these lots and we talked about how all these were going to be type B lots, which means the ridge point is right in the middle. So if I were to draw a basin, this basin would be right in the midpoint of the lot. And then we talked about how these lots would be A lots, which means all the water from the rear yard drains to the front. So that means that my basin is gonna be right in the back backyard there. But since we're gonna have some buffering and some plantings, you know, just for this conservative estimate, I'm gonna go up to this property line right there. We're responsible for capturing our water within this property. We're already halfway there, guys. I mean, I know I was kind of rambling on, but as long as you know where your inlets are going to be, we can actually start sizing some of these pipes. So what we're gonna do here is start on the easy side first. So what I'm trying to do is generate a sub basin of this inlet. I'm trying to understand how much water that this inlet is going to catch. If I was to look at this, I know that this is going to be the high point right here. And a lot of times what this may look like, I'm gonna use blue beam, this little area tool. A lot of times when we're grading, this high point is going to intersect the right of way right there. I'm gonna start drawing this basin and capture these high points right here. And I'll kind of explain why this basin is the way it is, okay? All right, so I just drew my first basin, and I need to make sure that it actually lines up with this center line. Something kind of happened here. All right, so right here, I've I've drawn in a sub basin. At the end of the day, all of this water is gonna go in this pond. And same when I go over here to that inlet. But what we're doing is we're trying to understand how much water is directly going into this inlet that way we can size this pipe underneath the road. But we're not done. We need to draw the other basin to understand how big that pipe's gonna be because there's more basin that's going to go into this inlet that contributes to the flow of this pipe. So let me go ahead and draw the other one. I'm gonna start at that center line, I typically go right there at that right of way break. Let's see. And I'll show you why I'm picking a uh, the points that I am. Why Why did I stop at this mid midpoint? Well, if you were paying attention earlier, this is a type B lot. All of this water is actually draining to this pond. It's not being captured in that inlet. I'm trying to size the pipes here. So I'm only accounting for the area that's actually gonna go into these pipes. And you know, you might be asking like, why am I cutting it off here? And why am I cutting it off there? Well, if you think about it, if this is a high point, we're gonna be grading down about 2%. And we have a gutter right here. And basically all of this water that sheet flows right into this gutter is just gonna be picked up in this other inlet. But I'm not focused on this entire site plan. I just wanted to focus on this cul-de-sac and how you can start thinking about sizing these pipes. You know what's funny is we're pretty much already there. So I have a drainage pipe size tool that I'm about to show. But first we need to do some math. So what's 1.22 plus 0.66? We got 1.88. We got 1.88 total. So this is how we can start sizing our pipes. I'm gonna size this first pipe off of this initial basin area right here. And then I'm going to size this downstream pipe off the accumulation of both of these basins because it's cumulative. All of this basin area contributes to that pipe right there. So let's go to my handy dandy little spreadsheet and I'm going to have to explain this a little bit. At a high level, what this is doing is we have two different equations. We have Manning's equation, which hopefully you all should know. If you don't, I can make a whole video on it. Manning's equation is going to help us solve for a Q and a Q is the flow. We're essentially gonna be solving for the capacity of each inlet based on its full flow. Let's say, for example, this 12-inch pipe, if we look at the capacity at full flow, we're just entering in Manning's equation and we're going down the list. We're plugging in for our knowns. So here we have N, which is the Manning's coefficient. The Manning's coefficient is 0.013. Okay, so we enter that in, and that's standard for RCP. We have the area because we understand the pipe size, which is 12 inches, so we can determine a cross-sectional area. And does everyone know how to get that area? Pi R squared, maybe? And then we have R, which is the hydraulic radius, which is the ratio of area to perimeter. The area of the pipe and the perimeter of the pipe. The way that I like to remember that is hydraulic radius 
equals A over P, R-A-P, rap. I like to rap. I make music. Feel free to check it out. Link in my description. I like to rap. So that's how I'll always remember it. And then lastly, we have the slope. We have to multiply by the square root of the slope. And in this case, we're just going to assume the minimum slope that we're allowed to have based on this jurisdiction. What you could also do is you could have a capacity and set it to the average slope. So watch what happens when we actually do that. First, let's uh, document the number. So 2.54. So let's change this equation to use the average slope. Wow. So it almost doubled. That's pretty crazy, right? So these are like little tools and, and tips, you know, if you're trying to increase your capacity at full flow. Now, obviously, you might have different conditions like submerged flow. That'll be an advanced topic that we can cover. But this is what we have here. So we have our capacity of these pipes. This is how much that they're allowed to fill with or you start bursting your pipes. Now, what we're doing is we're looking at the rational method to solve for a maximum area that can go through that pipe. We're solving for the capacity of the pipe and we're doing a back calculation to calculate an area that can go to the pipe. Let's break that down. A 15 inch pipe has a capacity of 4.6 cubic feet per second. I know if I'm gonna put that under the road, that little pipe that we had under the road, it can only handle 0.77 acres of flow. So let's actually go back. A 15 inch pipe can only handle 0.77 acres. Well, right here, I have 1.22 acres. That's how much flow is going to go through that pipe under the road. It's going to go through the inlet under that pipe. So off the bat, that 15 inch isn't working. Let's go to the next one. 1.26. 1.26 looks like it's a like it's a winner. It can handle a maximum 1.26 acres. Now again, you guys are probably wondering, well, what did you assume for your C and I factor? So again, we're taking this Q and we're dividing by the C and the I to solve for an A. So in this case, we're actually being very conservative and we're assuming a C factor of 0.85. And then we're assuming an intensity of seven inches and that's for the 10 year intensity. So we're actually being fairly conservative with this. So I, I, I feel good about this uh, condition right here, but always consult your municipality. Every project is different. That's your own liability. All right, but we're not done. So we have a total of 1.8 acres, 88 acres, that's going to go through this downstream inlet. So let's understand what the maximum area can be. So it looks like we might have to upsize our pipes because I'm seeing that we have an 18 inch here, can only handle 1.26. So let's bump that downstream pipe to 24 inches. And there we go. We've literally have just preliminary sized our pipes based on a pretty conservative method. So that'll be a 24 inch, and then this will be an 18 inch. That's all I have for today, guys. I mean, I hope this was able to help you. There's just a few things that I wanna to touch on. So off the bat, number one, there's a lot of assumptions here. This is assuming that none of our tail water from our pond is backing up into our system. That'll be a more advanced lesson. Again, this is all preliminary, just sizing, pipes based on rational method, Manning's equation. So we still have a lot of fun things to dive into when we're trying to finalize our design. Ultimately, we're gonna be putting this design into a program called StormCAD. StormCAD will help us input the tailwater of that pond and have us understand the HGL or the hydraulic grade line that is experienced within this pipe system. But I'm getting way too ahead of myself. I hope you guys learned something new. Feel free to drop a comment below if this helped and let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.